Okay, how about this? Blake and Weiss are best girls. I don't fully condone the idea, but I will accept it at this time. Hello, one and all, and welcome back to another Ruby discussion. I am the Max of Your Trades. With me, as always, is... Uh, you're only mate. Yay, he said his name this time. Good job. <laughs> and today... I, I've run out of ideas for, like, stupid stuff. To, nah, to well, you should probably start writing them down. Today, we, yeah, today we'll be talking about Volume 6, Episode 7, The Grim Reaper. That's Grim with two M's, just in case you thought that, that they forgot about that. They didn't. They thought about that ahead of time. Now! Anything you gotta say before we just jump right into this episode? Uh, Other than nothing. our lengthy discussion of soggy bread off camera. That's going to sound so weird out of context. So yes, I'm it is. And I, no, no, never, never give people context, ever. No, I will not. All right. We just going to go right into it? Yeah, let's do that. With um, Gus Sorolla shaking a Christmas present? What? Yeah, that is weird. Why you do that? Stop that, Gus. <laughs> You're going to break it, Gus. Yeah, and then... And then oh, my uh, God, giant robot! Oh, wait, it's a general cat. <laughs> I, I, it's just... The ads before videos sometimes. You never really know what you're going to get. Yeah. Anyway, so the, epi anyway, the episode starts, and what happens? What I said last time. It's true. We get a flashback. Oh, wait. No, we don't. It's Cinder and Neo. I forgot that scene was in this episode. <laughs> <laughs> Whoops. <laughs> My bad. All right. So, yeah. And apparently, so did the guys on... Uh... Ruby Rewind, they didn't acknowledge it, they just went straight to the flashback. <laughs> well, I mean, to be fair, not a lot was accomplished in this scene. It, it makes sense yeah. that they could accidentally forget about it. But, I don't know. Though, I, the, I my, gotta say, my, my question is, why are they down there? I don't know. But, uh, I will say, nice to see the, the mess that Ryu and Jin made was cleaned up. I know, I don't know who did that either. Maybe it was Cinder and Neo. Maybe? They were just like, ugh, that's disgusting. Let's, let's the dog get is like, that. <laughs> See, now I just imagine them kind of pushing Shin's corpse off the off the cliff with their oh, foot. God. Like, ew. <laughs> anyway. Yeah, just, 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 just get that out. Oh, there's so much blood. Uh, anyway, Cinder has a plan. A diabolically stupid plan that's totally going to backfire horribly for her. Oh, yeah, it is going to backfire, but I will say... I do like a good loophole sometimes. No, it's a very great loophole that she found. So, yeah, I mean, because like... Neo doesn't work for Salem or anybody in that group. So, technically, if Neo were to go and kill Ruby, then bada bing, bada boom, there's no stepped on toes. However, here's the problem. There is Neo's a problem. Neo's totally gonna double cross her. Well, that's actually not where I was going with that, but that's to it's possible. It's possible that Neo. Cause... Here's the thing. I, did, I wanted to bring it up back when, like, they had this alliance formed in the first place. Mm -hmm. Why did Neo spend so much time training and hunting down Cinder only to basically immediately go, Okay, well, I guess I'll work with you now. Probably to just backstab her when a god is down. That would make sense, and I hope that's where they're going with that. But if not, Salem has made it pretty clear that she knows where Cinder is and what she's doing at all times. Yeah. So, I imagine she probably knows about this, too. Hmm. I'm thinking Eva, like, she's somehow keeping track of Cinder through the Grim Arm. That's possible. Or, she's got more of those spherical hentai Grim around. That's a gross way of describing them, but not entirely unfitting. Regardless, Cinder says, Yo, Neo, you should go and, and probably kill the ruby. And Neo's all like, Yeah, okay, sure, why not? Oh, whoa, whoa, that's not what she says. I mean, it's close to it. She says... What? And that's where they go from there. Oh, right. I forgot. Yeah, Neo doesn't talk. And Sorry, she I'm has good. holes in her that. pants! Pant holes! Yeah. She, she just totally got some new ones. Man, she is very short. <laughs> She's like four foot ten. I know, but like, man, Cinder can't be that dang tall either in comparison to, like, next to her, just, that's nutso. Hmm. 
Anyway, now we I get will to say, the... oh, I saw something briefly uh, when I was like scrolling through some stuff. Mm -hmm. Um, that handshake. People like compared it to the one she has with Raven and making a deal. She made a deal with Raven. Yeah, in Volume Five. Oh wait, Cinder. Yeah. Sorry, I thought you were talking about Neo. Was like, oh, okay. Neo was not in the last volume. That was kind of a point. <laughs> well, the one before that. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Anyway, Sorry. Okay. Uh, and then there's... I mean... Okay, I knew this was going to happen from that GP episode. But because there was a snowman dressed as Neo with a sign saying Winter Maiden, some people must just be like, Oh, this is foreshadowing that Neo's secretly the Winter Maiden. I mean, it's not impossible... It's not impossible, but I hope it's not the case. It's... Well, I mean, because that's basically the exact same plot twist as Raven being the Spring Maiden. Yeah, I know, but the fact that it was from that chibi episode... That would also be weird. It's like, yeah. There's a lot of reasons why I hope that's not the case. Either way, Cinder mm -hmm. is definitely not the kind of person who would not backstab. She, she likes to backstab. That's kind of her thing. Hmm. So, I don't know. Either way, one way or Wait, another... We're still talking about Cinder. Yeah. Right? No, yes, that's yes. not a thing. She likes to shoot people in the heart. Well, she also likes to backstab in the figurative sense. Yeah. In the figurative sense, dude! Also, I just looked up, uh, Cinder is 5'11". Okay, so she's actually really damn tall. Yeah. Okay, fair enough. I mean, that's way above the average of a woman, anyway. And most men as well, I think. I think the average for men is like 5 foot 10 or 11. Anyway. But that means nothing to Hazel. It means nothing to Hazel and his gigantism. Yeah. Anyway. We get to the point of the episode that everybody is obviously going to talk about. Because it was the best part of the episode. It really was. And it's a flashback of young Maria. And mm -hmm. she is significantly taller when she's young. So... I've never, you know, I old as you age, you do shrink slightly, but never uh, to the degree. Like... That's ridiculous. Yeah. We also learn pretty quickly as a Nevermore flies forward that she has a really, really cool weapon. Yeah, I think this might be my favorite like weapon in the series now. It, if it isn't my favorite, it's really close because it really shows off how useful gravity dust is. Yeah. It's, it's basically, it's it's two hand sickles that can sort, I, originally I thought it was magnetism, but gravity dust was brought up and it made more sense. Mm. That can just constantly, like, reconnect to each other. Yeah, I mean, I I knew that was the case like, when I was reacting to this episode. Mm -hmm. I was like, oh, that's gotta be it. Plus yeah. the purple glow. Plus, okay, so, like, she threw one of the sickles into a rock, and then she activated the dust again. And the one she was still holding dragged the Nevermore over to the rock where it got slammed it like where it got slammed into it. That was awesome. That's just a clever use of a weapon. Yeah. This lady knows what she's doing. Which makes what happens later so all the more unfortunate. <laughs> but yeah. uh, we're not quite also, there yet. Also it's a shame that that bridge got destroyed, because she could have met two samurais. That's true. Nevermores hate bridges. What's up with well, that? Although unfortunately they were gonna fight or kill each other. So. Yeah, I know, but seriously though, for realsies, no. what is up with Nevermore's attacking bridges? I don't know. Seriously, Nevermore's, what did a bridge do to you? Anyway, it, she uh, shows them the evil eye, and then boom, turns into a statue, and then it gets all crumbly. Well, with the fire's gravity for like a second. Yeah, it does do yeah. that. I'm not yeah. entirely sure what that... Dramatic effect, let's just say. <laughs> yeah. But then, as it turns out, I guess a group of hitmen were planning for this exact situation? Hmm. Because what? They. I don't know, did they, they. Did they send the Nevermore? And they thought, yes, the, and she'll do exactly this thing to make all of this happen, and she'll land right here. Otherwise. I mean, we'll, it's possible they might have just been, like, following her. Like, Maybe. For a while, and they saw the Nevermore but, and was but like, they just, but immediately yeah, well, after she picks up her weapon, it's just, they're just there instantly. Mm. Like, but we don't they, know what they were doing off screen. I guess. Although, anyway, we got three. I, still, we got I do want to go back to. Dudes. 
I don't want to go back to Maria's weapon. All right, sure. Does every silver-eyed warrior use a scythe? Apparently. It's like when they're deciding weapons. Okay, uh, I gotta choose my weapon. What color are my eyes again? They're silver. That means I gotta go over scythe. Okay. There is a reason. the rules of remnant. <laughs> right. There is a there is a reason why it's so consistent. We'll talk about that in a bit. Yeah, yeah. But I'm anyway, just yeah. Anyway, just joking yeah. Three nameless nobodies show up and they're all like, "Yeah, we're gonna like beat you up, see?" And then some freaking crocodile faunus from freaking Peter Pan is there. Yeah, I've I've seen people like, make that. No, I mean that has to be what they're referencing. Yeah. It's a crocodile with a clock. What else could it? Possibly be. <laughs> anyway, she's and got. This she, crocodile Faunus is British. Yeah, sounds a lot like Tracer. <laughs> she does actually know you say it. <laughs> so, it's it's like a combination. Oh, and the and the clock like time. Thing yeah, so it's clock. like it's like a Tracer Peter <laughs> Pan reference. It's weird. I don't know how deliberate it was, but I, didn't they say that like Hanzo was kind of an inspiration for the design of Ren's dad a little? I don't, I don't know if they ever said that, been. or if it was just a rumor. Either way, she shows up, and I'm not entirely sure exactly what her... I'm not sure what the deal with the clock is. I remember hearing on Ruby Rewind, apparently her semblance is that she's basically invincible for a minute. And that's why she has the clock. Oh, she carries like, the oh, clock so she seconds. knows. Okay, I was like, how yeah. does the clock trigger... It? The clock doesn't do anything, that's just for her benefit to know how long she has it. Yeah, but then again, this is just a uh, review wine like theorizing. I don't know if that is like her uh, actual semblance. It's but... well, it doesn't really matter for, uh, for re it doesn't it doesn't really matter for reasons we'll get into. But <laughs> the point is that would make a lot of sense. So basically, she gets a minute of complete and total invulnerability. That's that's a really good power without it being insanely overpowered. <laughs> oh, and there's like the glow when the minute starts and when the minute is up. So. Right, 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 right. Also, an important thing to note is her teeth are not part of her faunusness. I've I can tell because they're made of metal. Hmm. She has metal teeth, and I can tell because if you pause it while she's talking in certain scenes, you'll notice that there's like like little screws or bolts uh, holding it in. Oh yeah, yeah. Okay, so British metal teeth. Jeez. Why does that sound familiar? Because of the British guy with metal teeth and James Bond? Yeah, going for all sorts of British yeah, references, apparently. Th this lady is a lot of things, my goodness. Anyway, Maria gets into combat, and it's pretty mad dope. Because she's dual wielding like a champion. And that, look, yeah, here's the thing. Everyone. Them together. I know, I know, I know, but here's the thing. Everybody knows that dual wielding weapons is so much cooler than just single handed weapons. Oh, yeah. Even, I'd say dual wielding is even cooler than two-handed weapons. Especially if you can dual wield two-handed weapons. <laughs> Either way, apparent, I don't know, man, it's, it's, aura is really confusing to me. Like, it sometimes it runs out really easily and other times not so much. Or maybe this crocodile lady is just that damn powerful. But Maria's aura goes away really dang fast. Well, she did also just go off the fight with a Nevermore. Yeah, but it didn't hurt her that much. True. Anyway, so... See, the thing about the Crocodile Lady is... She... She ate part of her weapon? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Which I do is... want to just... Before we go further... Maria, like, joined them together going, like, Darth Maul style on here. Yeah, that was really cool. That was. It's it's a it's it's nice that your weapon has options. It always should have options. Mm. Anyway, so then she gets headbutted and her her little Cinco de Mayo mask gets all crumbly. Mm -hmm. And then she cuts her eyes out. Oh, and just just like four in Ragnarok. Yeah. See, here's Only the thing. Only Maria twice as bad. Yeah, twice as bad. It, the extraordinarily pained. Uh, moans of, of of anguish certainly did not help the scene because that made that, it so much worse that scream and i do have a little behind the scenes thing about that scream right because they had her voice actress yeah turns out when she recorded that she was uh well a week away from giving birth oh my goodness 
Yeah. So there's a very real possibility that that scream was from legitimate horrible pain. Hmm. Wow. Well, I don't think she was recording, like, during... No, 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 labor. no, no, but here's the thing. When you're that close to giving birth at that point, there's lots of, like, I don't know, you know, contractions and, and pains that happen. It's yeah. possible she was able to tap into those specific pains in order to make the sound sound, you know, the scream sound so authentic. Hmm. I don't think it's the same kind of pain you'd feel if you got your eyes cut out, but it, it certainly works, and it was very, well, very meaningful, well, and it shook me. I well, was there is shook. no way that we can know. No, there's no way we'll ever know, hopefully. God, I hope. Also, uncommon for a ruby is they didn't cut away. They didn't, like, obscure it. Just straight up, sword through the eyes. Yoink! Also, if you sl slow it down or pause at the right moment, you can see, like, the silver leave Maria's eyes. Yeah, you can, actually. I just realized that. Oof. So, now obviously... Yeah, I'm, I just watched it again. Like, the spray of blood, the silver glow. You're not wrong. Ooh. That, interesting. Yeah, I'm just gonna check it one more time. As much as I don't actually like re-watching the scene. But yeah, you're right. That is crazy. Hey, hey there's a possible thumbnail. Yeah, I, I guess so. As much as I don't really like getting into that, but whatever. So, Maria's obviously having a, a bit of a moment right now. And we, yeah. th we think she's just mindlessly flailing about in rage. She is not. I mean, the bullets were. But then she yucks, yeah. her, she yucks her weapon. And she's all like, oh, well, I, I mean, I, you could have told me to spare you because you ain't got those eyes no more. But I guess you want to kill me. You want me to kill you. And then Maria's like, ha ha. Nope. And yep. in one of the coolest goddamn mo moments ever, uses that gravity dust again. Stabs her in the back, and you'd think, oh, okay, you got her. It's done. Nope. Goes nope. for the head slice. <laughs> that is some Mortal Kombat fatality level nonsense. And I love it. Yeah, young Maria is such a boss, and I do hope, like, considering what comes up, this could give us an idea on what older Ruby could be like. It's possible. Hopefully with, you know, less eye gouging, though. Yeah, hopefully. And, okay, so... There's a couple things. One, I kind of hope that Maria ends up getting into some kind of fight because she goes into how she, she's ashamed of herself because basically after that happened, she pretty much gave up being a hunter and it was a huntress. And she has incredible shame about that whole thing. Apparently she eventually got an operation and her eyes can work decently enough, especially with the goggles. But obviously she was still terrified getting her eyes gouged out kind of does that. I mean, they weren't yeah. out, but they were horribly, horribly damaged. And can we just stop and appreciate the horrified faces of everyone after the story ends in the, in, in the trailer? Yeah. Like, Blake is like, dear God. <laughs> and Crow, too. But Crow for a different reason, because Crow knows her now. Yeah, and Tur turns out... Turns out he, he based was... his... Yet she was an inspiration. Yeah, not only is she a complete and total legend that apparently never showed her face or used her real name, Crow idolized this person, and that's why he has a scythe for a weapon. Mm-hmm. And that goes into a Ruby has it. Well, I mean, she mauled it off of his, so... It, well, no, so it... Look, it, it still works. It's a connective thread. It makes sense. Yeah. He was inspired, and Ruby was inspired. Bing, bang, boom. Science. Mm. And in one of the most poignant of all lines... When Crow said that, you know, he wanted to be just like her, he's like, well, I'm a disappointment, so you're, you know, you're on your way towards that. <laughs> Eesh. Which is darkly, cuttingly appropriate. Yeah. I mean, that is something Crow really probably needed to hear. Like, yeah. But being such uh, a especially... tool. Yeah. But, yeah. Yeah. This is a, a, a very, very cool lady. Hmm. But after she says, well, I'm a disappointment, Blake's like, hey, how can you say that? Easily. And she's like, yeah, I just gave up. And it's like, and she, in, in, in a very poignant moment, in a way that also, it's like, in a, in a way to compliment Yang while at the exact same time making Yang feel supremely guilty about the things she said. 
says like, oh, well, I mean, some of you have already dealt with the same type of thing I have and are still going, so obviously you're already plenty stronger than me. Yeah, though, and you, you can see is... it in Yang's face. She does not feel good about that. <laughs> hmm. There is another little detail I've heard people talk about that specific shot that what you that? mentioned. It was that. So, uh, when they're all looking at Yang, Ruby and Weiss, they're smiling because, you know, thinking, yeah, even though Yang lost a part, you know, she's still, like, fighting and everything. Holy crap, you're right. She's still okay. Blake she... is not. Well, yeah, that's because Blake sucks. How dare you. I'm just speaking the truth. Ruby and Weiss, Ruby and Weiss, good spicy. friends, good friends. They, 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 they are supportive and they are good and they have character developed all over the damn place. Yang and Blake, also, they're, they're lagging behind. Also, Blake's the only one who knows Yang isn't actually okay. Okay, well, I also refuse to believe that Weiss and Ruby aren't vaguely aware of it either, considering their heart to heart earlier in the last, uh, last volume. Well, still. It's obvious that they... No, she's not 100%. I'm just saying. Anyway, Maria's still feeling pretty bad about how awful of, a, of an everything she is. The Ruby's all like, yo, teach me how to do the thing. And, sh and then she's like, oh, damn. Maybe I can teach you the thing. Please. <laughs> teach her the thing. And then Ruby gets a phone call from, as it's labeled... Vomit Boy, because I guess <laughs> yep. really can't live that down ever. Hmm. Also, it's the exact same ringtone that was in that episode of Ruby Chibi when John's trying to call Weiss. Adorable. So, John calls, because I guess they're within cell tower service now, or scroll service, whatever. Hmm. And she, he's obviously, oh, thank the god, <laughs> because you're not the deaded. And then yeah. they realized, oh, dang, we actually made it to the town. And it's well, a very nice they, town. After Yang gets up that hill. Yeah, she and, gets uh, up the hill. But that's a good town. I like that town. It's got a big old wall. And as we know, giant walls around towns never fall over. Yeah, totally not. Definitely that, not Definitely not something that's totally going to happen at some point. Definitely not. That's never happened in an anime I watch. Yeah, exactly. Anyway. You know the one. Yeah, obviously. I mean, I do like that they got a bunch of guards up there and stuff. It's pretty great. And then Nora shows up and makes everything funny again. Wait, before we before we get to that. What? The hill that they're on. The hill they're on? Yeah, and Yang's got that, like, trailer on a bike. Yeah, it's a really like, strong motorcycle. What of it? Yeah, there's, like... Oh my god, I wish we could see, like, some deleted scene of them driving down there, because there's no way they got down 100% good. Oh, probably not, but I feel like that's the implication. But yeah, getting up that thing is one thing. <laughs> Going back downhill, that's gonna be something else entirely. I guess, I guess her motorcycle is just that amazing. Yeah. Who, hey, that's why she made the lookup code 458, which has the letters I-L-U. I love you. She likes that bike. It's a good bike. Best ship. Yeah. Yang, Yang and bike. Confirmed. It could be called Rumblebee. <laughs> Boom. Anyway. Nora like tackles said, Ozpin, or Oscar as the case may be. And it, yeah. was, and it was amazing. And she asks, who's the old lady? Who is the old lady? But after... Okay, so here's the thing. Ren and Yang just, like, hug. John and Blake hug. Yeah, they have a little half-hug thingy, and it's, and it's adorable, and I like it. It's just... I know that they... The the people behind this show both love and are kind of annoyed by the over of benign things. Mm -hmm. And I will admit this obviously means absolutely nothing. I just find it... Like, again, I'm going to preface this. This means absolutely nothing. It's just animated for the sake of animated. But it's weird that, like, Blake kind of, like, just immediately goes to John and gives him the half hug. And, and Bren and Yang just go straight up, like, yo, hug time. <laughs> and then afterwards, Ruby and John have a hug. Okay, except that one probably has more meaning behind it. Yeah, that one does. Okay. <laughs> um, I d honestly legitimately have no idea how much we're meant to read into the situation. 
but it was a it was a it was a strong hug. I'll say that much. And John was a very very emotionally happy to finally have them back. Yeah, and dude, you know what the fans are like. Characters look at each other and they're like, "Ship confirmed." I'm I'm aware of that. I completely understand that. The thing is, I don't know if the show is really going to do that. I could see them doing it. I could see them not doing it. Yeah, I don't I... I don't know what we're supposed to take away from that other than they're clearly very very good friends at minimum. Yeah, that's what that that's what I'm doing and Yeah, that's that, that's that's my assumption. That's what I'm rolling with. If something else happens, we'll we'll cross that bridge when we get to it. Yeah. Yeah, and anything, if I make a comment on it, it's more or less just a joke. There you go. But we had to bring it up because, well, I mean, that's not something we get a lot of in this sort of show, you know? Mm. The only blatantly obvious thing that we ever got was the, the Ren and Nora scene, which was admittedly incredibly adorable. That was. Anyway, Ruby says also, that she promised, we're in... oh, okay. she promised that they'd get there. And John is crying, and because John's had a hard life. He has. <laughs> it's like I don't want more friends being dead. And it's about to get a little more embarrassing with what's coming. Oh yeah, a little, but at least it's a hilarious kind of embarrassing. Oh yeah. Anyway, well, so so old old Mr. Man over there, I'm talking about you, is like this is San Francisco, and then I asked him. It is. How would he even know? He's I never been there. TV. You watch TV. Oh, okay. So because you saw it on TV, that means you've been there and you can have an exact one-to-one -one idea of what is what and where is when. Huh? Dude, it's got the bridge. It's got the... Got... What are those called again? I don't know. Don't you Don't you call them trolleys? For, yeah, I think we do. I Wait, think no, we, trolley, I... trolleys is what you call shopping cart. Oh. Um, I think we call those things trolleys. Oh, okay. Anyway, look, I'm not saying you're not right. I'm just saying I find it suspicious that you were so confident in your assessment. Suspicious I know of a cities around the world. Yes. I don't know anything about any of the places you live. I mean, you could recognize London if you saw it, right? I don't know. Is Big Ben within the shot? Depends on where you are in London. See, that's the yes. thing. If you don't got the giant honking clock, I don't know where you are. I could be in Istanbul for all I know. But there's also stuff like the London Eye, uh, Buckingham Palace. Oh, right. Buckingham. That's where the place with the guards who stand. Yes, and they're not allowed to move. Yeah, I know. That seems like a very ineffective guarding si you know, situation. But that's besides the point. You know, because... I remember on the news once, one of them got sacked because he just had a little dance when he was like by himself. Rude. He, he just did a little, like, thing with his legs, and they sacked him for it. <sighs> Disgusting. Anyway, here's something pretty great. Uh, I I mean, it makes sense, because, you know, the, this universe has video games, obviously. But mm. for the first time ever, we see a movie theater! Yeah! And one of the titles of one of the movies is about the Fool of Beacon. And I'm... Okay. It's not unlike the real world to make movies about horrible tragedies. Mm -hmm. However, in universe, it hasn't even been an entire year. Has it? I'm not too sure. Well, it's, it's still winter. Yeah, but, but I think uh, the start of Volume 4 of Ruby was 16, and she's confirmed to be 17 now, so... Okay, well, regardless of that, the fact of the matter is, to get a movie into pre-production, get all of the filming, all of the editing, and all of that other stuff, they would have had to have started production on the Fall of Beacon almost immediately after the actual Fall of Beacon. Mm. And that is incredibly disrespectful. People died. Yeah. And what's that even... And how, what's the movie even gonna? What's what's just, what, what's in the movie exactly? They don't. No filmmaker or actors have any idea what actually happened. I don't even think they look. Well, I guess they. I guess eventually they kind of do know Cinder. Is an actor playing Cinder in that? I don't know. Like, 
Now is, that you say it, I have so many questions about this. <laughs> like, is there a, is there an actress who's playing as Cinder? As they as sorry about that. As they're as they know of her. I do, I have so many questions. If Cinder watched the movie, would she be like, "Hey, wait a minute, <laughs> I should be getting royalties"? Like, I don't know. And I realize this. No, is a... she's just gonna be like, "Oh, they picked the wrong cast for me. Like, their betrayal is all wrong." Yeah, that sounds like her. And I realize this is an incredibly stupid and benign rant to go off of, but this is exactly the stuff I was thinking when I saw the dang signs on the movie theater. I didn't know was this when I was reacting to this episode. I saw people point out on like Twitter or Tumblr or whatever. Yeah. And I was like, oh. Um There are so many questions. Yeah. Like we don't we as viewers know everything that happened, but the outside world, the characters inside of this that weren't that were, you know, not directly involved with everything that happened. They don't know everything that happened. So is this just a dramatization of what they think happened? Oh, like making up a story like in that set. And on top of that, why would they even make a movie like this? Because even if it's been a year, the tragedy is definitely still fresh in the minds of everybody. I mean, it, it rattled the entire world of Remnant as we know it. Yeah. Wouldn't re-trudging up those horrifyingly negative emotions kind of be counterintuitive? Hmm. I'm just saying. I don't know who's the director or the writer of this movie, but I do not like them. I'm going to go see Trist in the Mist instead. Or Demon of the Deep, is that what it says? Yeah, it's Demon of the Deep. It looks like a grim yeah. octopus. Hmm. Oh, what about that coming soon movie? I'm not sure we what that... We don't see a title. Yeah, we don't see a title, and we don't get much of the poster added, only about half of it. I don't know what it is. Yeah, but for what it is, it looks intriguing. It does look pretty good. Anyway, we spent like seven minutes talking about this. We should move on. <laughs> yeah, it's probably. Anyway, uh... The, the remains of Team Juniper, I guess they're still technically... I guess they're Team Junior now. Regardless, they give the lowdown on the entirety of the town. It's doing okay in certain ways, and not okay in other ways. Yeah. I mean, you know, it's like just about every other town we've seen up to this point. Dealing with things in its own way. Pretty much. And then they ask the poignant question. So, where did like, y'all stay? At, well... Oh, yeah, sorry. It's I'm, a... I'm thinking ahead. Okay, yeah. So, like, all right, so, uh, where did you guys say? And then there's a lady, and she's over there, and she's like, howdy-do, and she's got this baby. And that yeah. automatically triggers all sorts of red flags, because babies are evil and should never be trusted. I was actually going to say this, like, because we've gone ahead of what I was going to say. All right, go ahead. I'm, I'm forgetting stuff. Uh, Blake asks, yeah, we should probably look for a ship, right? Yeah. As she says that, oh my god, look who's standing next to each other. Oh, Ren and Nora. Oh. Okay, yeah, fair enough. They are <laughs> they, they are technically a ship. And it's a very sturdy ship that's likely not to be broken. So, they should pro- Are you saying they should make a raft out of Ren and Nora and paddle? Somehow I think Nora would be up for that. <laughs> that is an awkward... An awkward scenario. Anyway, it's John's sister, and Ruby is extremely excited about that. Yeah. I don't 100% know why, but whatever. Maybe I don't know. Maybe just maybe she's wanted to meet John's family. I know, but like, why? <laughs> I don't. I don't. I like it. I get why an audience. Watching this would be like, oh, we get to learn something about John's family. We see one of them. There they are. And it's like, whoa. But coming from Ruby, it's just kind of odd because she's like crazy excited about it. Mm. Like, Yang is concerned in the background of, of Ruby's glee. Yeah, I gotta like, look at that scene again. So. Yeah, no, yeah, look at that scene again. And once it zooms in on Ruby's face when she's in full squee mode, you can see Yang immediately to her right, and she's just like, I'm very worried. <laughs> anyway. Oh, yeah. I'm even looking at, like, Blake. She's just like, uh. Why? Why? And the thing with Weiss. <laughs> yeah, ev everyone, even Crow in the back is a little yeah. confused. Oh my god, there's another possible thumbnail. 
Yeah, I, I honestly, I, I gotta, like, as many of these faces as I possibly can, I gotta make that the thumbnail. Because they're all varying degrees of concerned and confused. I absolutely love it. Anyway, so... And next shot, Yang playing with the baby. Yang is, in fact, playing with the baby, with a plane. And it, and I will admit enough that the situation is rather nice. Mostly yeah. just because it's nice to see Yang happy in any mm -hmm. context, even if it's very brief. Yeah. And I think people have uh, tied that scene with, like, you know, Yang practically raising Ruby That's herself. true, she did do she's that. Doing the, you know, she's good with kids. That, I mean, if anybody in the team is going to be extremely good with kids, I honestly say that Yang is probably the most likely to be very good at it. Mm -hmm. Then I want to say, well, I mean, Weiss is right there with her. And I feel like, I feel like Weiss at least knows enough to be able to get by. Not as great as Yang, but I feel like she'd be able to handle it. Yeah. Now here's the odd I think, thing. Though. I think I know what order you're gonna go in. I I don't know if you do because I'd say Ruby would be next. Yeah, that's what I was gonna think. Uh, oh yeah, because I mean, because honestly, I'm just going by how far apart they are from the kid. Yeah. Well, like, the thing Blake is, Blake is the furthest away. So yeah, yeah, Blake Blake is also the only one who doesn't seem to be incredibly happy about the situation. Regardless, she also had no siblings. I probably wasn't around a lot of kids, honestly. So she probably is just uncomfortable around them. And at this exact- well, I mean, Oh my god! I mean, she's, she's smiling while looking at, like, Yang playing with the kid. Well, that's because Yang isn't in, you know, depressed mode. Also, I paused that's John- it. I paused John in the middle of his, uh, his arm flailing. He has three yeah, arms! Got a third arm! <laughs> There's another possible thumbnail. John- John's semblance unlocked? Three arms? It's <laughs> <laughs> so weird looking. Yeah, I mean, it looks great when it's in motion, but when you stop it and you pause it, it's, it just has three arms. <laughs> that is so crazy. Anyway, I he then John delivers the immortal line that shall go down in history. I'm not a baby. That's a baby. <laughs> yeah. Um, and then the baby freaking John, sasses him. Yeah. But John, I hate to tell you, buddy, there was a pole and Ruby rewind. People Who are mean to John. Who is baby? John or baby? The results everyone, are in. Everyone chose John. It is in fact John. Was there at least a few people voting for the actual baby? I think 23%. Okay, I mean, that's good enough. Anyway, Yang and Weiss, apparently super into babies. Yeah, their the faces, there's another possible thumbnail there. Uh, yeah, there's a lot, there's a lot of really good material in this episode. Yeah. Anyway, they like the baby. And the baby's like, I don't know what's going on, but okay. <laughs> Man, their eyes get huge. Yeah. I just realized that when I, when you start the scene, they're big, but not that big. But they get bigger the longer the scene goes on. <laughs> Ooh, spooky dookie. Anyway, then we I, get a picture. That can't we, be good for your eyes. No, it can't. Anyway, then we see a picture of John's, at least him and his sisters anyway. Mm -hmm. And we theorize that the one directly to the left of him that is upside down, that is the sister Saffron, the one that we just met. Yeah, because uh, she's wearing orange, and the one in the photo is wearing orange, so... They do seem to be at least somewhat color-coordinated, which is very helpful. Yeah. <laughs> admittedly. I, I, I still love Sean with, like, the pigtails, and he's holding up that sign just saying help. You know what else is interesting about young John in this picture? He's still got the hoodie. Yeah, but it's also much smaller, which means he had a kid-sized version of that hoodie. Mm. And then when he grew out of it, he got a bigger one. Yeah, I've even seen some people point out about this. Uh, when he met Pura and didn't know who she was, and Weiss was like, Oh, she's on the cover of every Pumpkin Pete's Marshmallow Flakes box. Yeah. That's where that hoodie is from. I know it is. But How the... did he not know it? <laughs> well, admittedly, when Weiss said that, then he realized that that was her. I know, but... So that was the only thing that he could have recognized her from. And even then, I don't know. It's like Wheaties. Who knows how many people have been on that box. Hmm. Anyway, his family looks nice. You got your... Yeah. All, you, you know, you got your all your, all your standard tropes. You got... Uh, there's a nerd one there. You got yourself a tomboy one over there. There's a couple twins. And then there's like an old one. It's crazy. It's, it's, it's a rambunctious house. Yeah. Kind of wonder about John's mom, though. 
because the his, his 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 direct parents because of the whole you know have another loving like tidal wave of gra of gals in the family. Like how does how does that work? That's just probability, man. Yeah, you know, I don't know why I've just thought of this uh, uh like this flashback from uh from an old Family Guy episode. Oof. There's a like, a flashback of when Meg was born. It was like it's a girl, and Peter's got like all this sports. Yeah, equipment, like, that, okay. Um, back when the show was actually pretty good. Could could you check again? Yeah. Like, <laughs> could you imagine if like when Jean was born, his dad was just like, I finally have a reason to use that stuff now. It's it's possible. Anyway, Jean and his sisters. Although you um, never know, the girls could have been into that stuff too. Who knows? At least one of them looks like they would be. Maybe the yeah. twins too. Either way, yeah, their inter John's interactions with his sister Saffron is is very very cute. It is. And I paused again, and in this scene, uh, she has her thumb in his mouth. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, so as it turns out, the sister Saffron is in a happy relationship with the her wife, mm. and I'm gonna be honest. I don't know why. Yeah. I do not know why. For some reason, before this, uh, her name is Terracotta, shows up. Mm -hmm. Part of me was expecting this. And I don't know why. And I'm concerned about that. <laughs> why? I don't know, maybe you're just getting good at cooling it this Mi volume. I guess, I, I admittedly, I do seem to be calling a lot of things, but for some reason... Hey, even, so do I. E I'm like, yeah, I know, but even even though we volume saw... Volume 6, more like volume Max and May cooled it. It's true, definitely. We're very good this season. But the point is, yeah. it's like, even though, you know, you first see her, and she has the baby with her, and you're like, okay, well, genetically, biologically, you wouldn't make that assumption... And yet I still did, and I don't know why. Either way, she seems really nice. Yeah. And, okay, I'm only bringing this up because you want me to. Uh, I was gonna make this joke. Yeah, so, go ahead. Terracotta goes in, Saffron goes after her, and hot damn! That, that right there is an impressive behind! Mm-hmm. <laughs> I don't know what's worse. I don't know what's worse. I really don't know what's worse. The fact that you're bringing all of this up, or the fact that I'm the one who alerted you to the fact. I know, because no one has been mentioning that. The first thing I ever heard about people commenting on it was you sending me a photo. Because, well, I mean, the fan base is always going on and on about, like, every little thing they can to make jokes about stuff like this sort of thing. And nobody else noticed but that but me? I know, it's so weird. How did I f notice it and no one else? It makes no sense. That, that, that's kind of like in your Until Dawn Let's Play. Like, you're the one person I've seen who got Jessica in her underwear. I didn't even mean to do it! I know! I wanted to avoid it! Uh, <sighs> anyway, anyway, point is, point is, we found a booty worthy to be called the second best in Ruby. Or the best, depending on your particular standards and tastes. That too. Anyway, we get more uh, context. This seems like a very nice little family they got here. I really it genuinely is. hope that they aren't establishing this family just to destroy it. Oh, please, no. I like the detail. I like that they have their, they, they are actually both wearing rings. It's very nice. Oh, why they haven't, like, zoomed in? Well, yeah, when they're on, when they're on, the, oh, when, yeah, they when are. on the couch, they're both wearing wings, rings, which means there was a wedding, and that just sounds lovely. Yeah. Good for them. Yeah, so let's hope nothing bad happens to them. I really I've... don't want something bad to happen to them. Protect them. They are civilians. They don't deserve any traumas. Mm. Do not throw a monkey wrench into this, Rooster Teeth. Also, I saw someone post this on Twitter. I'm gonna say it here. So, in Remnant, gay marriage is legal, yeah. and they're allowed to have families. Yeah. Real world, take notes. Yeah. And not only... Not only is it both of those things, tr or both of those things are completely true. On top of that, nobody is, seems to be even vaguely a uh, problem. Sees any sort of problem with it. E everyone in the cast is just like, "Oh, hi." <laughs> yeah. 
like Everyone's that, super that, chill about it. Like, because I guess in this in this hellscape of a world where gigantic monsters are constantly running around eating people, even they just they're that mi they're miles ahead of the actual real world, and that's depressing to me. <laughs> hmm. Anyway. Anyway, Ruby the legality the, le the legality of students fighting these monsters is being thrown into question, which admittedly is something people have been asking. And I gotta yeah. be honest, Crows really does seem like it's pretty much just a bunch of excuses. Yeah. Like I don't. He's like, I was not prepared for that. <laughs> and then, the second most iconic line in the episode: "Shut up, there's food." <laughs> yep. And then they all Everywhere. have many sandwich. Sandwiches. So many sandwich, and Ruby does a happy, happy food dance, and mm -hmm. it's pretty great. And if you pay attention, I mean, to if you pay attention yeah, to Crow, Crow sort of does it too. Crow totally, very subtly does the exact same thing. Mm -hmm. Anyway, so I guess some weird towers are all. Yeah, there's a little dance. That's cute. The towers yeah. are all wiggity whack, and I guess Terracotta is um, being blamed for all of it. Yeah. I, I do like how uh, Saf was like just doing the baby talk, like who's getting like falsely blamed, and she's like, "Me, it's me. I am the one." Oh, I guess we should very briefly. Let's not go on a super tangent about this. Hmm. You think? Okay. Do you think it was? Okay, because you know biology. Did they? Did they adopt? Did they get artificial insemination? I think it's what's called. What do you think? I mean, I could see it being either case. Because the baby looks a lot like Terracotta. Mm -hmm. Which means she could have been the one carrying the baby. And that's why there's a physical... That, that, that's why there's a physical resemblance to her and almost none to John's sister. And it would also kind of rule out the adoption thing. Which means mm -hmm. it could be some kind of donor thing. Yeah. The point is, we're approaching all of these as the realistic options, rather than insinuating some kind of weird magic happens that allows gay couples to just have biological children. For, for more context, I've joked about Leone from Akanga Kill being the love child of Blake and Yang. And I tell you and... that that's biologically not a thing! Yeah, it's a joke. It's a joke that has no founding in, in, in reality or facts. Mostly just because Leone is... A blonde cat girl that is similar to Yang. Not good enough. Also, what is up with this baby's pantomiming? It's like... That's a smart baby. Mm. It's like making all of the necessary faces and hand motions. It's weird. Just shows how much like further ahead the like, remnant is compared to us. Yeah, the, just in every conceivable way. It's Even it's, babies are smarter. Even their babies are less terrible than normal babies. It's just frustrating. Anyway. Also, I want to point out Blake's look when uh, they're talking about the communication tower being a bit messed up. Yeah. She's not happy about it. Yeah. Uh. Why are you so concerned, Blake? Was it you? No, because who has... Uh, Master Communication Towers? Blake. No. It was Blake. I'm s I am still won't be surprised if there's some foreshadowing there. But you think it's the White Fang again? Maybe not the White Fang. Because there are no White Fang anymore. It's just Adam. Yeah, that's what I'm thinking it could be. I think it's just Adam? He's just like, alright, here I am in fictional San Francisco. Hey, Radio I mean, Tower, I'm gonna mess that up. He could be there. I mean, I'm not saying he couldn't be, but all I'm saying is that Ruby is inhaling those sandwiches. Yeah. How many... Taking a page right out of Goku's book. I know, but like, she eats things so fast. How is she still so tiny? I guess she just gets that much exercise. Maybe she's got like a really, really good metabolism. I mean, she does have super speed as her semblance. That could burn a lot of calories. Yeah, true. So, I mean... It's still an exaggeration and silly, but it's one that does have at least some basis in reality. Hmm. Anyway, so they ask, what you gonna do? Well, I guess we're gonna go talk to the military. And then the military is like, nope. Well, actually, Jean's like, uh, yeah, we kind of tried that and it didn't go too well. And it didn't. And so, oh, come on, how bad could it be? And then, nope. 
Now here's a real question that we have to ask ourselves. Now that the episode is over. I, I have one question about that last bit. Okay, go ahead. Am I the only one who's yes. looking at Nora? Yes, you are. Because I'm, I'm rewinding now. Let's take a look at Nora's face. No, I mean in terms of like it not going well. Like, oh, you think Nora, Nora did like, it? You, what, uh, what did you do, Nora? That is some casual racism that I will not stand for. How dare you? Well, uh, well, a friend of mine told me he did the exact same thing. Fair enough. Okay, so here's my question. What is the writer's obsession with the introduction and swift murder of young women? Think about it. First, we had Amber, right? We we briefly yes. knew we briefly knew about her. Boom, dead. And then there was Vernal. Boom, dead almost as soon as she got there. And well, then they were both maidens. That's besides the point because then we. Oh no! Wait, Vernal wasn't even a maiden. What am I talking about? Exactly. And then there's that random lady that 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 Cinder murdered for the clothing, and left the naked body in the ditch. Oh yeah. And then. There was Sienna Khan. And now, there's Crocodile Lady. Who I've learned is named Talk. How, am I, how have I not caught on to this? There's a lot. And I mean, you know, that's not even bringing in Penny and Pyrrha because those are more story related. But these are more superfluous characters that show up and just get murdered. <laughs> See? I'm onto something here. I'm not just talking out my butt here. Yeah. They introduce and then kill young female characters very constantly. Hmm. Also, I came across a post of, like, uh, episodes that come out right after Christmas. Is it always and, something uh, incredibly dark and sad? Yeah, kind of. Oh, well, let's hope that so, they decide to break the trend. Volume 3. The Battle of Beacon starts. That's true. Volume 4. Crow gets poisoned. P Crow did get poisoned. Volume 5, Weiss gets stabbed. That's true, that did happen, and I am not happy about it. So... Oh boy. We're gonna be celebrating the holidays, being like, Merry Christmas, everyone! And something's gonna happen in Ruby that's gonna make us sad. Yeah, and someone's probably... that's gonna be the end of 2018. Yeah, someone's probably... <laughs> hmm, someone's probably gonna die. It's been, a it's been a really long time since somebody that matters has died. It just means we're all overdue now. They established the precedent that characters can die. So at this point, now they're just waiting. They're making us... They're, see, here's the thing. It's, it's, it's writing in the most evil of ways. First, we, we go on the assumption that nobody is important is going to die. Then, we're shocked to our very core when two characters we like are killed. Then, we spend the next couple volumes with near misses, like with Crow and Weiss. Making us <clears> think... No, they wouldn't dare. And it's true, they wouldn't, because they don't want... They, they're, 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 because they want to lure us back into that false sense of security. It's like, oh, we just had a bunch of near misses, but the, everybody always ends up coming out safe. Maybe the worst is behind us. But then, boom, they do it again once we all think that they're safe. Yeah. Uh. Hmm. I expected a bit more of a reaction Dude. to that. I mean, I, I do think you're onto something. Okay. Because, but... what if we learned about the writers of Rooster Teeth? They are evil. And failing that, they're just colossal trolls. Yeah. I mean, well, out of the writers, I met Carrie once years ago. I don't even know what a Carrie is. One of the writers and voice of Neptune. I didn't assume it was a girl. Uh, I've still got that I didn't get to meet Miles that day. Yeah, it's all very depressing. We all wish we could be John. Anyway. Anything else? Uh, oh, wait. Rad, Ruby Rewind. Oh, yeah. There was a preview. I imagine it didn't give us much to work off of. Well, As that's how the actually... previews usually work. What? What? Well, we're right back at the base, only there's more than Ruby, Weiss, Blake, and Yang there. 
Okay, I guess they did that for dramatic effect, or maybe they were lagging slightly behind. Yeah, it must have been dramatic effect. Anyway. So, Yang's right up at the gate, like, hey, let us in, but these two guards are like, no! And Ain't Crow's like, Nobody gets look. in to see the wizard! <laughs> <laughs> Not the way to, oh, wow. But then Crow? Crow does a thing. Crow's like, look, I already told you I'm friends with Ironwood, and the guy's like, General Ironwood! Rude. He's like, Right, General Ironwood. Look, we also have Wei Shini here. We just want to get her home safely. So let us in, and we'll talk to someone and sort this out. That should work, so, but I feel like it won't. So these two look at each other, and then just say, Approach! Oh. Okay, Weiss, that, that was easy. Weiss looks over at Blake. Blake just, like, shrugs, like, I don't know. <laughs> so Weiss walks up to the gate. And these two, the gate isn't open. They just look at her for a while. And then just say, fine, you can speak to our commanding officer. Okay. Then they, then they say, stay right there. We will go and get her. Oh, and it's leading us to believe it could potentially be winter. Quite possibly, yes. Well, also, they walk away going, hut, 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 hut. Do they really? Yes. <laughs> oh, wow. They are such tryhards. Yeah, they really are. And then Blake's just like, um, was that kind of... And then Ruby's like, totally weird. Yeah. All right. Well, okay. That's actually a really good... That's that's a good, that's exactly what you want to see in a in a preview. <clears throat> something, that's, something that lets you theorize and think about what might be coming up. I mean, it I mean, would be nice if it's winter. I know it would be great if it was winter because we haven't seen her forever. But it could totally be. It could totally that easily just before. be trying to make us think it's winter. It could be good witch for all we know. Also unlikely, but I would yeah, be okay with unlikely. that. But I'd be okay with that too. Mm. I mean, ideally, it's somebody we've met before, and it's and it's a reunion. Yeah. But I feel like that's what they're trying to make us think. So it's more than most likely somebody new. Hmm. Probably somebody who's going to be introduced and then murdered. Probably. Okay, Maybe. here's the thing. Who knows? Look, hang on, hang on, hang on. But if, if that happens, if it's I, totally hard to hit first. If I'm right, I swear to God, if I am right... You are psychic. I might start being a little creeped out by myself. <laughs> Because that would be weird. Well, if you do get this right, I might send you some things to say on these recordings. Ah, fair enough. Alright, well, that's Ruby. We've been talking for an hour. So, anything else? Oh, are sweet. We, we haven't had, like, an hour-long one in ages. Yeah, no, this was a good episode. Yeah. And it gave, it gave us lots to talk about, and not even just serious things. We also... You, I mean, you gotta take into consideration a good chunk of that is us ranting about the movies. Yeah, like random background things that don't really matter that and much. I, I don't know how long we talked about the butt. Yeah. <laughs> so, sorry. No, it just like... seemed... I know, and it's fine. It just it sounded like you were thinking about it. It's like, man, how long did we talk about the butt? And you, <laughs> and you couldn't figure it I out, mean, so you gave up. I mean, if anyone's likely to do that, it's gonna be me. Yeah, obviously. Alright then. It was a great episode, and I want the next one. Me too. So I guess we'll... We also want Team Ruby to do cool stuff. Yeah, do more cool stuff, especially Weiss. Separate Weiss from the group and have her do cool stuff by herself. Have her have a 1v1 win. Please. I just... just just once. Just Please. once have Weiss defeat somebody all on her own. That's all I want. Yeah, I want that too, because she never does. Everyone else has a 1v1 victory. Mm. Weiss doesn't. It's Stupid. very upsetting. Stupid chainsaw guy. I hate that guy. Anyway, see you next week. Bye.